imposter syndrome. Uh, I can I can probably hear your inner monologue around yep. it. Yep. Like I just said, I feel lucky. Yeah. But you also feel like, why me? Like there was there was some kids that were super talented in high school that went to school for acting and did all the things and they did everything and never, and you're like, wait, you're doing all this. And this. Are you really good? Right, but you know, I'm sure you've learned or figured out by now, a lot of it's just your face and body. <laughs> yeah, very true. Nothing, talent's it's, fine. It's so true. If talent you and I have the same amount of this. talent and I look like this and you look like that, you're gonna book Camacho, right? And you're right. just gonna book more shit because yep. you, as when I direct, it's like when I cut to someone, the audience needs to feel a certain way in a split second. Yeah, with you, they're like, if I'm low angle, it's he's menacing, he's mean, message. he's silly, he's whatever. Yeah, eh, you cut to me, you're like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so a lot of it is, so it's imposter syndrome. But yeah. have you ever cast anything? No, no. What's interesting is I almost would, it would be an interesting uh, exercise. I always want people to come, if I'm just casting a commercial and I'll go, come watch, come watch these 90 people. Wow. And you just go, nope, nope. Okay. Nope. Ah. It's, a, it's, it's all a feel. It's, it was all, the, it's the a the feel, feeling but it's mostly you. just physical. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a lot yeah. of it's just kind of modeling in a weird way. Yeah, and it, but it's too much. You're saying it's too much put on talent. You have to be talented, right? But Everybody. when people say, "I know I'm talented," you can know you're. I'm talented. I look like what I look like. You're not gonna. You're gonna cast me as a jerk yeah. or a boss yeah. or a drug addict. <laughs> That's just what it is, guys. Wow. You know what I mean? This is, this, dude, I'm, first of all, <laughs> butt cheek buoy. But I mean, I'm right remembering there. this. And Neil Brennan's butt cheek system. BTA. Uh, <laughs> and it's and just, this. most of it's physical. Dude, I, I You're remember. not going to be cast as a 22-year-old. But see, this is the thing. I remember, This is, I had a crisis, and this was bad. Oh, everybody hates Chris. While we were shooting this whole thing, and I remember saying the lines, and I was just like, I... I don't, I'm not believable. Dude, I doubted everything I was doing. I, I, it was around the third season, and we only did four. But around the beginning of the third, I was like, you know how there were things where I could, when I did the movie White Chicks, I felt every word. I knew I was, like, it was knocking it out the park. Well, you, you also worship white women. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> We all know that. That's why the part worked. It, it was, it was, it was excellent. Okay, I knew it. Uh, but, but at the same time, when I was doing that, first two years, I was like, okay, I'm getting better. But then there was a moment I was just going, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not good. I'm not good at this. And I was horrified. Like I thought everybody was going to see it. I thought everyone was going to notice. I remember asking my wife, she was like, no, it looks great. What are you talking about? But I was like, I don't believe it. I thought she was lying. And then you start to feel like everyone yep. is just pandering. Mm -hmm. And 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 it it was like that for a long time. And that imposter syndrome is a big, big block. I mean, even now, I'm, I'm, I'm hosting America's Got Talent and I'm out there and it's live and the whole thing, but you know, I'm big. I'm I'm, I'm a big personality, I, and I like being like, "Hello, everybody!" I love that. I like walking in a room. What's up? Hey, because this is the thing: attention is the hardest thing to get. Like, yeah, and especially you know, now. If I yeah. walked in like, "Hey, everybody, how you doing?" Some people can do that. Yeah, I can't do that because people are like, they're still doing their crosswords they're still looking over here. They're still doing. I'm like, yo, I want that. If that's what the mission is. You know, I want to get that. But then I get, you know, you look and maybe look at some tweet or something. And they're like, he's so loud. He's too loud. And why is he yelling? You have a mic. And then, and then, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm yelling. I'm yelling too much. And maybe I never was supposed to do this. And it, it, it's so crazy how it'll creep up. And I've been doing it for five yeah, I years. Yeah. I mean, it's the only, I say it's the only talent where you wake up and go, I don't think I can do, and I don't think airline pilots wake and go like, I can't fly planes. That's I can't. The, the, I don't understand. I'm a doctor. I don't even know what a scalpel is. That is exactly. You go, 
and it's like every time you do it, you're starting from the beginning. Yeah. Get back in line. That's what I call it. Get back in line. Great. Get back in line. That's exactly it. And you feel like it's the first time you've ever done it. And you go, why can't these lines? Why did I say that? And then you start redoing what, you know, what you did or the audition process or whatever. And you're like, you know, there's times I've totally monked up an audition. Then I go in the car after the audition is over and do the thing for like two hours by myself. Yep. Just so I could do it and say I could do it. But it's it's a waste of time. And it's so ridiculous, but this is the stuff we go through. But you know? I feel like I, again, I could be dead wrong. I feel like you prepare a lot. I do that, I do. which I that to me is the best. It's the antidote for kind of every malady that we face as performers. Because <laughs> like, if you prepare, you're not you're it. You're not going to be nervous. You're just going to be like, no, I'm just going to run this system that I've been prepping. I, I prepare so much, Neil. That my wife, she told me, I think you have a learning disability. <laughs> because what I would do is write my lines. Shout out to wives. Yeah, she, yeah. This is one reason why I'm so messed up. But she said, I think you have a learning disability. I mean, because I would fill notebooks. I mean, yeah, with just my lines, yep. and I would rewrite them so I knew them, and I yep. could rewrite them. I had the same so, system. Use it, and I mean, fill pack. It looks like. Literally, like, uh, like a you know, Jack person. Nicholson yep. and the whole thing. Yep. Like, it's just all work, no play makes Jack and yeah, yeah. And I have full of old lines, and it just keeps. And she's like, something's wrong here. You did all this. I, I can't be unprepared. I can't feel like nothing worse than walking on set and feeling like you don't know what's happening. Yeah. And, you, and you're the problem. Yeah. I don't want to do that. And that's another thing, as I've realized, I can't wing it. I can't wing it. And I don't know if I've said this on, I might've said it on Kenan Thompson's podcast, but when there was a Mark Twain tribute for Chappelle, right? Mm. And it's like John Stewart and, and Aziz and heavy hitters, right? Sarah Silverman and most stuff and what, all these people. Wow. And, uh, and I did, and Jost and Che and Keenan and all these guys, and I did arguably the best. And when I got off, Keenan goes, how did you do that? And I go, I tried. <laughs> and it was the first time I ever really like prepped it. Yep. Had a thing, prepped, 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 prepped in my, they're all doing stuff. I'm literally going over a teleprompter on my computer. Yep. Like kind of rudimentary shit. Yep. And I think a lot of people wanted to be cool because Dave's cool. And all I'm right. like, I've been around Dave long enough to know like it's a different system. Yep. He is cool. He can wing it he's the only one yep. i yep. really it's like not like someone's like he, he just can do it Amazing. i can't so i'm not gonna pretend i can yep. and i can just smell that on you all like, over like just over prepped over yep and then prep on top of that oh wait and you know what the nightmare is working with somebody who's like loosey goosey yep I'm like, I had this whole thing prepared. And, and you're a square. You're a bitch in a square. <laughs> oh, dude. I come in and be like, please say say the line like it's supposed to be said yeah. because you just said something totally different. Yep. And and I'm going, will the director come in and tell this guy yep. to say his shit? Yeah. Right? I'm, and, I'm, and that's the point where you get too into everyone else. And, yep. And that, that's where that imposter syndrome is. Why it's do I burden. need to study so much? What's wrong with me? Do is my wife correct? The person who knows me the most in the world. Oh, no. Do I have a learning disability? I, 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 Should I, I, I quit? And, and then Should I get I turn mad myself I in? tell her. I'm like, no, I, I don't. I, I just like to be prepared. She's like, no, no, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> you Fine. have a learning disability. I, what's embarrassing for me is I'm just starting to understand that I need to do it. Yep. Like I did, I have a new show, did it I in New York and wasn't prepared enough and it was good but i really i had taken three weeks off i hadn't done the show in three weeks and i was like no it's in me and then it was like i spent the whole time trying to remember it and i was like i have to spit take two hours any time i do a show at least to that day we're just memorize it we're brothers yeah because i'm trying to tell you that's that's me i I can't i just started terry (laughs) terry I'm talking wow. about it's August this or it's September. This is in like June where I'm like, idiot, take the lesson from Twain, 
take the lesson from so i take i get my fucking crazy notebook yep and i yep. and i imagine it yesterday so i do a show saturday and at the comedy store had a new joke that i didn't try because it wasn't memorized enough and then i'm, I'm gonna do it tomorrow today's monday long story short i spent 20 minutes yesterday just writing memorizing it there you go just like in a down moment on a sunday sh cool people are smoking weed yeah. <laughs> right partying swimming I, hey man i never got these dude, people on set they're talking yeah like, like what like, are you doing so what are you doing tomorrow <laughs> i'm going dude i am studying my freaking line yeah I, listen this is so weird i have to have my sides in my pocket to say my lines correctly it's weird if my sides aren't in my pocket i feel like i don't know them yes yeah. it's, it's, and it's strange because i'm not looking at them but i just have to know they're on me yeah and all of a sudden i can i can vision the lines and vision those things but if the sides are somewhere i don't have them on me i, I don't know the scene <laughs> well i'm also talking about meeting yourself where you are yeah like all right so so what so you need yeah. the sides yeah so yes but it's hard to do it's hard to accept like and you feel like am i do i have ocd do i have you yeah, start I feel judging like I should what you know have this all, yes. i've been doing this 20 over yeah. 25 years yes i should be able to wing everything right now yeah and you see actors that have been doing it and they can just look at a script once and toss it i've seen that can't not can't do it not, not who i am not me i've heard stories like sam jackson just doing whole monologues just yeah like uh eh, got it and yeah. you're like oh why can't i do that i can't yeah. do this i can't I'm not that dude. I got to spend like two weeks with it and have the whole thing open for, I, I what I do is keep scripts open and leave it there for a month and just kind of open, and if it's a movie or whatever, and I just go and then just constantly look at it over and over and over. Then I'll be able to write it without even looking and I know what's going on. Dude, it's, I'm not. I'm, yeah, but it's your, I love that. you have to accept that that's your system. You know what? But that's where that imposter and, syndrome yeah, stuff. Yeah, and then once you learn it, then I can improvise. Yeah, yeah. Then I can like have fun, but I don't, yeah. I'm gonna be, somebody one time said, I think Bill, William H. Macy told a buddy of mine, he's like, when you see actors like taking serious moments, a lot of times they're just trying to remember what they're supposed to say. <laughs> that's, that's really good. And like, I'm not trying to be like, I mean, whether it's stand-up or act, whatever, I just have to accept what my, body and brain need to do i love that about you neil this is thanks. good thanks Ty. no we, thanks we're, so we're brothers thanks this so is much good. tell me about your imposter syndrome my experience of you it's you earned you didn't get any breaks that i'm I didn't aware skip of any steps yeah yeah so why the imposter syndrome because i mean you know you, you be around your heroes yeah you know what i'm saying like you're handling it pretty well <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, two specials well, change the game. But that's true though. Like you, like somebody like you, you know, y'all, you, you created the power show. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so it's like you never quite feel like you fit in until you have conversations with people like yourself, right, or other people that I admire, and they've never quite fit in either. You know what I mean? Well, that's the other thing is like, your like uh, appeal is if it were baseball, you're like a knuckleball thrower. Explain. I, I hate baseball. Uh, I used to love it better when everybody uh, was You're like, if there was a lineup of people, I wouldn't go. Yeah, like he'll be the most successful gotcha. black radio person. Gotcha. I just, just, I just be like, I don't know. Like maybe him. Gotcha. I'd be on. You're be on my list of like because you're funny, but you don't lead with it. You're smart, but you don't lead with it. It's everything sneaky. You know what I mean? Gotcha. You're like, it's like everything's sort of off speed and kind of like, oh, by the way, like uh, I'm sure when you started getting a lot of hits on YouTube. I'm sure the radio station was like. I never paid it no attention. The crazy part is I never, I always knew that I, I always said I want to be one of the biggest radio personalities in the country. When I started in 1998, that was my mindset. I want to be the big, one of the biggest radio personalities in the country compared to the Howard Stearns, the Angie Martinez, the yeah. Wendy Williams, the people, you know, Tom Joyner, Doug yep. Banks, God bless the dead, like those individuals. So I, I knew I wanted to be in that realm. When we started Breakfast Club, I told NBA and Angela, we're going to be syndicated. Right, I knew that, but I've always been the type of person just to bury my head in the work. Like I don't pay attention to any of it. So when I do peek my head out and realize like what's going on, it's like, oh shit. Well, I'm okay. <laughs> how do you? Back. How can you kind of will something like that and have imposter syndrome? I just knew, but that doesn't mean. Be, 
No, Why did you think you would be? But, you, but, the chemistry or like? Well, no, but think of the difference, right? Knowing that you're going to be successful at something still doesn't mean you feel like you deserve to have it or you belong in that position. You just know. But sometimes you can get in those positions and be like, I don't deserve none of this shit, Joe. If these motherfuckers only knew. You know what what I mean? did you see coming? Do you know what I mean? Like when you said we're going to be syndicated, tell me why you thought that. I just knew. I, I knew the success I was having in radio. You know, I, I can't even call it success. I got fired four times. Right. Think that's about what I'm that. saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had gotten fired four times, yeah. but every time I got fired, some I got I got I failed up. Like I got put in a better position. So yeah. on this fourth time, I got fired from radio in Philadelphia doing mornings. Back home living with my mom. When I got the gig for Breakfast Club, I knew we were going to be successful because I had been watching Envy, you know, online with when he was at Hot 97 and Power 105 and on Shade 45. Same thing with Angela E. I was watching her on Shade 45. I had guest co-hosted co on Angela E's Shade 45 show. So I just knew us three together, if we did what we always have done and we, we all were co-hosts, so I knew that would work. And if we utilized the internet the way that, you know, we all were individually, we would have some type of success. And I just was looking at the game. I'm like, yo, there's no, this lane is wide open. Yeah, like, well, that's, it was definitely wide yeah, open. Yeah, I'm like, if we're not, if, if it's not us that's going to end up being syndicated, then who? Yeah. You know, because at the time there was no You guys seem like younger shows. than everybody. And and that, that too, that, that's very true. Because I mean, at the time, Tom Joyner was kind of making his transition, yeah. you know, and there, there really was nothing. There, the lane was yeah. wide open. Yeah. It was just there for the taking. So I just knew if we did what we were supposed to do, we were going to have success. And so then it becomes- And being with iHeart. Being that iHeart right. likes to syndicate shows. When you got fired, did you think like, yeah, I deserve that. You were right to fire me. Yeah. No. Yeah. I never thought about it. It was just like, damn, again. Like, I thought that was the way. You know who used to say that shit? Donnell Rollins. Donnell, Donnell Rollins used to say, if you've been fired three times in radio, you're a star. He's kind of right, yeah. Yeah, so I, when it happened the first time, I didn't I didn't know of Don Eldon. It happened yeah. the second time, I didn't know of Don Eldon. When it happened the third time with Wendy, you know, I had started to know Don Eldon. I remember him saying that because he was doing his radio thing. Yeah. And I remember saying, like, damn, well, when the stardom going to happen? So when I got fired the fourth time, I'm like, well, shit, I must it's be a shame way Donnell, overdue. Donnell's only been fired twice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, I must be way, way overdue. And then I remember going to see him when we first started doing Breakfast Club, he was at Caroline's and he said that on stage. He said he had a whole joke about when you've been fired three times from radio, you become a star. And he was like, man, when they fire you from radio, you know, you just gone. They go from Power 105 1, Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy, to Power 105 1, DJ Envy, Angela Yee. And, and it's just be like, it is, they just erase you. And that shit was funny, but yeah. he was right. Yeah. You know? So. I, I forgot the question. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, here's the here. I'll rephrase the question. What do you think your shortcomings are when you are? Oh, imposter when you are, syndrome. Yeah. Okay. What, yeah. What do you? I, I started realizing imposter syndrome after I started going to therapy, and then I started backtracking, and then that made me realize why I felt the way I felt in so many moments. You know what I mean? Like when people talk about uh overcompensation. You know what I mean? I can go back and look at certain moments where I was acting a certain way, being a certain way, because I was overcompensating for my shortcomings and creating the whole character of a Charlemagne, you know, the God. The, the, creating that character was to deflect from Leonard. You know what I mean? Maybe if I'm Your over here- Your real name's Leonard McKelvey. That's yeah. right. So maybe if I'm over here being this big, boisterous, loud, I don't give a fuck personality that nobody will pay attention to. What's funny is you're not that big and boisterous and loud. Yeah, well, back then people would, might say okay. otherwise, you know All what right. I mean? But back then it, it's like, let me protect them from this person that inside of me is shrinking in, in the corner. Got it. You know what I mean? That's why you never, I didn't used to go nowhere. I never, I've historically never gone, gone anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back then we would, you know, go to the clubs and stuff, but shit, I used to have to get lick it up and high out of my mind. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> to show up Just in public Just to, to get over then. the anxiety of it? Absolutely. And so it's like, Take, take take that lifestyle, getting up, getting drunk, getting high, going out every night, then going right on the radio in the morning. So yeah. it's like all that wild shit, not blaming it all on that, but a lot of that wild shit was because we was really living that lifestyle. All of us were, me and me and Angela. We was all drunk high out of our minds, coming on the air, saying whatever, doing whatever, you know, talking to people however. 
Okay, how did you get over the the imposter syndrome? Oh man, now see, that's interesting. I thought, like I said, I started therapy in 2016. I don't think I got over imposter syndrome until December of 2019. How do you know the date so well? Because you know when you when you start realizing, it's when you this is when you brought COVID 19 from China to America, <laughs> and you finally got over your. Right, I do have a lot of a, uh, uh, I guess, imposter syndrome. No, yeah, I, wait, I haven't wait, even wait, gotten wait, to the block are, shit. Are those words behind my head? Yes. Yeah, there they are. Oh. Hit it. Hit it, Will. <laughs> this guy's got, First of all, give him a weird. Just give him ding weird. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then give him, let's start with imposter syndrome because that is, that's one of your blocks. And I can, I, not like I believe it, you should, but it's a, it's like a niche that not a lot of people. Really? Because I, I kind of feel like most people, particularly in entertainment, uh, with the exception of Kanye, have it at some point or another. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just can't imagine. But maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm uh, uh, projecting my anxiety on everybody else. But exactly. Yeah. But I, I really feel like you know, it's, it's not. I'm, and this is not false humility. I don't want to say that I think I'm untalented or not, I'm not funny. But there are a lot of talented, funny people in the world. And, and why me? You know, I've, 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 you know, like we talked about. I'm, I was a nerdy kid with an accordion. By all accounts, I should not have had the life and career that I've had. Mm -hmm. I, I feel very fortunate and blessed, but it, it just feels very, very odd to me that, you know, every morning I wake up in a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. I'm doing David Byrne lyrics of now, course, but you get, you get the point. So what do you, th what do you make of it? Do you just think it's like, the songs are funny, uh, like the songs are unequivocally funny, but the, is it just like you got in a jet stream, you providing a service culturally and no one really replaced you, even even people like Lonely Island or like they did they they don't do parodies. I guess they kind of did kinda, a few parodies, like genre like, parodies, things yeah, like genre that. parodies. But I feel like you were doing specific song parodies. Which did that exist in much before you? Well, I mean, I, I certainly didn't invent it. I mean, our, our national anthem is a song parody. Is it really? It is. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Alan Sherman, who I, one of my all time heroes, he of course did a lot of song parodies, although most of his parodies were pl public domain and old folk songs Got and things like that. Uh, so, you know, I, I just came in, uh, at a good time. I guess, I guess I'd be what Malcolm Gladwell would call an outlier because I just struck it exactly the right time. I, I got signed like right when MTV started, they needed content. They didn't yeah. have any funny videos. And all of a sudden there was this guy that was making these low budget comedy parodies and like that fed their content stream and do you do you feel like you have a good showbiz sense because you always had a look you always were it's not like meditated though yeah, it's, it's I not got calculated it. it's not like oh i'll wear hawaiian shirts and glasses on a mustache and that's going to be like the iconic look well, you know but yeah but you were either weird enough or confident enough to not try to change yourself yeah, because I was so out of the box anyway. I mean, it's it's like you know, I just had to go with my gut and just go with my actual personality instead of trying to fit some kind of mold. Because like from from the get go, I wasn't fitting any mold whatsoever. So I figured, why bother? You wore Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, I like I like loud shirts, ridiculous shirts, and you know, one one uh tour early on, uh, I I figured that I should have one ridiculous request on my. Uh, backstage writer yeah, like course. you know the sure. no green m&ms or whatever and i said okay give me one like garish loud hawaiian shirt for every show that i do and i did like 200 shows that year so i all of a sudden i had a closet full of hawaiian shirts no, and have you bought do you now people probably send them to you yeah I, I get them you know from from fans and i just you know they they just appear on my doorstep great <laughs> wonderful must be nice yeah it is um all right so the imposter syndrome what's nice about getting to a point in your career I'm getting to the point where I'm like, I can just about get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. Like the imposter syndrome, I can be like, okay, I was an imposter and I got away with it. Like, I feel like when you get to a point where you could just be like, I'm retiring or something and you don't like, need to worry about phew. being, yeah, you don't <laughs> I'm need done. To, yes, you don't need to worry about I'm, being I'm an imposter. I'm approaching the finish line yes, now. You're getting away with the jewels yeah. on your, on your speedboat. So what I'm saying is retire. 
Okay. Um, no, but what I'm, you know what I mean? Like, it, but, but I mean, Im- even to this day, like, you know, I, I have moments in my life where I really, I, I told this story on, on Seth's show, but, uh, Seth Myers, sure. uh, sure. <laughs> but I, I told about like on this last tour, uh, I played Carnegie hall, which I'd never played before in my life. And it was a big deal for me. I yeah. mean, you know, it was Carnegie hall. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I talked myself, uh, into not being nervous about it because, you know, something I'd wanted to do my whole life. And, uh, I thought I, it was the end of a long six month tour. And I was like, it's just I would like show? to interrupt and right. say that someone I know saw your show in the 90s and said it was one of the best shows he ever saw. Oh, nice. Yes. Heath Seifert was his name. And he nice. said well, he saw you, so you at, at Universal in Orlando. Nice. There was like a adult island and that you did well, a show uh, at. Par- that paradise. Something. Uh, so it's Something. no longer there, I'm sure. Yes. No, don't look for it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So great show anyway so, so yeah so um so I, I finally show up uh at carnegie hall and i'm trying not to be nervous about it just another show just another show and i walked in the hall and there's like florida ceiling pictures of you know frank sinatra and judy garland and the, the beatles and i'm thinking okay i don't belong here what am i doing here but you know some of them didn't either well <laughs> you don't think well, no, I, you know, I, I don't I don't even feel I, I don't even feel like I deserve to be on this show, honestly, because I, I looked at the, some people that, that you've had on and even to be mentioned the same breath as Steve-O. I mean, it, it really I mean, what an honor. It, it really is. Am and I, I appreciate right, folks? that. Um, good. I didn't know who you were going to say. And <laughs> you you picked a funny one. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but I, I guess it's you, you did it. Is how I feel. It's like, I don't know, man. You, Are we done? Can we do yeah, this? No. <laughs> oh. Steve. Steve-O. All right. Please. Um, <laughs> you must have, you must have done something, is, would, would be my argument with the imposter syndrome in your head. I must have done something right. You must have done something yet, right? Yeah, yeah like no, it, I like it, it, like, you, like I said, I'm I'm not saying that like you know I I entirely don't deserve it because I I do feel like you know I I bring joy to some people and yeah. and uh, some. you know some some not all. I, I, I'm on social media. I know You're I don't no bring Steve-o. joy to all people. You're no Steve-O. I know Steve-O. Go ahead. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, um, yeah, I, I've done a few things right in my life. But yeah. I, again, uh, I'm, I'm just very grateful because I, I kind of, uh, deep down inside, I kind of feel like I just kind of don't deserve the life that I've been lucky enough to have. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab ass with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe. <laughs> And then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.